Welcome to She Coaches Coaches. I'm your host, Candy Motzak, and I'm going to help you find the clarity, confidence, and courage to become the coach that you are meant to be. If you're a new coach, or if you've always wanted to be a life coach, then this is the place for you. We're going to talk all about mindset and strategies and how to, because step by step only works when you have the clarity, courage, and confidence to take action. Let's get started. Hey everyone, and welcome to this episode of She Coaches Coaches. I have got a really interesting guest for you. I met this woman at a networking event, and she has got a background that is going to be so fascinating for you to learn about. So without ado, let me introduce you. Her name is Lauren Wittig. She is the founder of Heart Light Wellness, and she's an intuitive healer, a Reiki master, a student of soul-focused esoteric healing, a shamanic practitioner, and a mentor to those on or just beginning a spiritual path. Plus, she is an <laughs> award-winning novelist. <laughs> she loves to combine her healing skills and her story skills to help her clients reveal the stories that no longer serve them, body, mind, or spirit. And as healing happens, new stories are revealed, enhancing and supporting the transformation into a healthier, more joyful, and heart-centered life. Ah, exactly what we all want, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. this is the same journey that Lauren took to health and heart-centered purpose, and it brings her great joy to be able to assist others on their journeys to joy as well. Lauren, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to talk to you. Oh, I am too. Thank you so much for inviting me here. It was so great to to hear from you and get to know you a little bit. I'm looking forward to our chat. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how you got started. Like, I mean, with that bio, you have just done so many things. I have. And it's it's interesting. I've done most of that in the last six or seven years. But I I guess hmm, the, my when I first started on the health journey, I was a stay at home mom. My youngest was very ill, was born, you know, constantly sick, had life threatening allergies. And um, I started looking for some alternative sources of support for him because the meds were just getting worse and worse. And he was in a downward spiral. And so I uh, serendipitously got connected with a very well trained um, acupuncturist and herbalist. We were in the DC area at the time. And he was a Chinese doctor working for the National Institute of health. And, uh, and so I started taking my son to him. And then I got over my own fear of needles and had him work with me for my allergies, and found amazing relief, just amazing relief. Um, he had both of us on a, a, a tea that we was made specifically for us and uh, acupuncture treatments. So to shorten the story, we moved away from DC a few years later. So I no longer had access to that doctor and uh, my health began a slow decline. As I hit menopause, it got really bad. I was having to, oh, it was just, no, nobody wants to have menopause the way I had menopause. <laughs> but again, I started looking for alternative help for that and, um, and started to find healers who were able to help me with some of the more um, robust problems I was having. Um, for example, a friend of mine put me into contact with a um, an intuitive healer, so very much what I do now. When my asthma was just getting so bad, I couldn't I couldn't function very easily. And an hour on the phone with that woman on the phone because she was 120 miles away from me, um, she got rid of my asthma. And it was not a medical cause; it was an energetic and emotional cause. She literally she said, "Your mother is sitting on your chest." Um, and so I, unfortunately, I'm very attuned to energy. So I feel it when somebody's working with me and I feel it when I'm working with somebody. So I could feel what she was doing and I got off the phone going, oh, that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of years later, I went back to her for allergies. I had actually gone into anaphylactic shock in an allergist's office, just getting tested for shots. Oh, yeah. And so that's where I was, I was freaked out. I was like, I can't go back and do that again. Cause it's just. That no, was not safe. And so I went back to this um, same healer um, and saw her in person that time. And in an hour, my allergies were gone. And again, it was an energetic, emotional thing. It was my belief system that everything was scary and I was fearful of everything, which I first said, 
I'm not afraid of it. Oh, wait, yes, I am. <laughs> so, so that was that, that time I went, okay, this is what I want to do. And I started finding people who were doing the kind of work and who could teach me to do it. And, um, and since then I, in what, 2018, I opened my own practice and uh, here I am so four years later. <laughs> and and it's um it is my real joy. I just love this work. And I will say I come from a techie background. I I was a computer trainer back in the 1980s when it was all brand new. And I yeah. loved that. So I started there, you know, moved through the writing of the books and moved into the healing. Um and and so yeah. And the okay, one other fun thing that I like to bring up. The books that I wrote, I wrote all six of them before I ever knew I had this gift. And in four of those books, there are metaphysical healing gifts of some variety that I didn't even know were real when I wrote the books. And most of those things I can do in a slightly less dramatic form than my characters. But <laughs> no, no um, theme music coming in. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just it was interesting to me that that was definitely coming through my my subconscious way before I realized that consciously that it was something that I could do and that I wanted to do so. There's my life story. And and this and it's so interesting to me that, I mean, first, each of the sort of the um, gateways or the, you know, things that set you on that next part of your journey was because of a personal experience that you were having. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of the listeners, you know, are coaches. I've also got a number of people that just listen to this podcast because it helps them grow as humans. And they're there it, it's it, it's interesting to me because it wasn't originally intended for that audience but i'm so thankful that you know yeah. it reaches more people but what is what is interesting is that most people who are coaches they've had something in their life mm -hmm. that something is not working whatever it is health relationships um self-worth confidence their career something is really not working and that something that's not working starts them on their path mm -hmm. to becoming a coach. And so, you know, there's something to be said for not fighting against these things that happen in our life. And, you know, sometimes it's easier in hindsight, but mm -hmm. to know that these things are here for a reason and that they're all kind of part of our path. What do you think mm -hmm. about, about that? I, I actually, I, I think about that particular aspect a lot because what I find is that um, the people who come to me are people who are on a similar journey that I've been on. So they're running into things that I have experience with. Um, for example, I had a narcissistic mother. I had an alcoholic father. You know, I had a lot of self-worth issues, a lot of money issues. And I those people are attracted to me and... And I think that happens, it's each, each healer kind of has your own niche, each thing that you've been through on your own life journey. So it's your, you, you know, you sort of end up sort of being focused on those things because it's what you know. And it really is always fascinating to me to, to realize I'll get a new client and I'll go and they'll go, oh yeah, I have a narcissistic mother. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so it's lovely. I find to be able to use what I've been through because it was not easy but now I have, I'm older, I'm wiser, I can look back on it and see the gifts of it, the strengths that I gained from it, the gifts that, that appeared because I needed to find people who had those gifts to help me. And it's just, it's, it's really lovely to have that hindsight and go, okay, there was a purpose there and I can use what I've learned and use the wisdom I've gained to help others on a similar journey. So I, I see exactly where you, you know, where the coaches would, would be the same way. Uh, yeah. Sorry. There's one other thing that I'm really curious about. This is the thing about coaches: is we're always curious. We got a mm -hmm. million questions. I'm curious about how how the guides, the healers, came onto your path. Like, how do you think that happens? That that right person shows up at the right time. Well, I I'm a, a strong believer that we are guided from beyond what we can experience, you know, as, a, as our reality. Um, and I have met a lot of guides over my, my journey to this place, to where I am now. And even when I wasn't aware of them, I think they were, you know, whispering in my subconscious. They were um, supporting me. They were guiding me. They were guiding things to me. 
uh, I, the, the Chinese doctor we found because my dad, I, I told, you know, he was aware of the problems we were having. I told him, I really would like to try and so something alternative. And he had happened to be in AA and he had met somebody in AA who was just setting up a practice to help people connect to alternative practitioners. She vetted them, found somebody who would work with my two and a half year old and connected us. I mean, that just was, it just dovetailed perfectly. Um, and to some degree, I had put it out there that that's what I wanted. And so then that's what I, I believe the guide, my guides in the universe brought to me. Um, and I've seen that again and again in my life where I put something out there. The one my, uh, my, uh, my family loves is they wanted a dog and my son and I had allergies. And so I was like, well, it has to be a non-shedder. It has to be hypoallergenic. I want to, I want to adopt a sheltered dog. I can't be, you know, <laughs> I had like a list of 12 things that had to fall into place. Well, the we found a dog and the only thing that was was on my list that we didn't match was the non-shedder. But she was hypoallergenic. She was six years old. She was from the, the shelter. I mean, it just, but I kept saying to him, thinking they'll never find a dog that'll meet these criteria. <laughs> but here's the criteria. If I'm going to accept the dog into my house, there we go. So, and yeah. So, you didn't realize you were actually doing the design spec, right? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> and clearly the non-shedder was too far down the list you know? yes, yeah, but she was a yeah. wonderful addition to the family so it was great <laughs> so yeah I look back and I see lots of times that that's happened to me yeah so it's um it's serendipity it's somebody stepping in who you don't expect to help you out with the thing that you need at the moment and it's amazing how often it happens and we don't often appreciated in the moment till we look back and go, that was just crazy awesome. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like how did that happen? Mm -hmm. To have that place of kind of wonder, I know, I mean, I know that I use the word gratitude a lot, but mm -hmm. there's more of a kind of an awe, you know, wonder, awe, gratitude yeah. all sort of combined in into this place when these oh. neat things happen. Yeah, I, I'm so I'm grateful every time I get to work with a client. It's just it's the most fun I never thought I'd have. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. And that's the joy part, right? That's yeah. the joy of your life. Tell yeah. me about I know that you have a program um, mm -hmm. that you uh, take people through. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I um I call it the Reveal Release Transform program. And it is about revealing what's, uh, well, first of all, the people who usually come to me are coming with pain of some sort. Either it's emotional pain or it's usually there's physical pain too. Sometimes it's relationship pain. Sometimes it's, you know, it can be any kind of pain, but usually pain is sort of what gets them here. And, and what I've learned over the years is if somebody comes to me for one or two sessions, we get some work done, but then they don't come for a while and they kind of backslide. And so I was looking for a way to create uh, some momentum around the, the healing work that I do. And so this program, it's over nine weeks or nine sessions, preferably in nine weeks, but it never works out exactly that way. And once a week, we get on a Zoom call, or if you happen to live where I am, you can come here, but my work works perfectly like this, but over distance or phone, I do it all the time. Um, and every session is a combo of mentoring and healing work. And the mentoring is sort of to see where we are now, what, what's come up, what do we need to work on, what's, you know, what's the focus this week. Um, I like to set an intention with the client at the beginning of what they want to accomplish so that we can kind of focus and track on that. And it's been remarkable. Um, I've been beta testing it for about six, eight months now. Um, and it's, it's live, but <laughs> um, about five to six weeks into this, five to six sessions into us, there is a major major transformation. It's like we have, we've undone, we've uncovered down to the nugget of whatever it is that needs to be revealed and healed. I like to say we bring it up into the light so we can see it and examine it. And then we can, we can reveal release. Then we can release the energy of that. And the other thing I love to say is you get to let go of the pain, the suffering, the betrayal, whatever it is that's really got that in a knot. But you get to keep the wisdom of it because that's what this journey is about. It's about gaining wisdom so that we can have a better life for ourselves, but also so we can help others with it. And so about that five or six week, I'm finding that people go, you know, I can't make it next week. They need a little bit more time to process. 
And so we just, we take a little break. And then when we come back, then it's all about the, okay, so what do we want to put in place for this? You know, we're letting go of this that's held you back. Where do you want to go? How do you want to transform this that you've learned into something beautiful and joyful and positive in your life? And every time, it's just this amazing journey that I get to facilitate because I'm not doing the healing. The the clients are doing the healing. I'm facilitating it, uh, much like a coach, you know, facilitates those aha moments. Um, and it's just it's magical. It's really magical. And it was it was inspired during meditation. It was um, you know totally came to me in, in a meditation. So. That's so cool. And, and yeah. what you just said, so about, um, you know, with the coaches, with the aha moments, it's interesting because as you're describing how you work with your clients, so much of that is a direct correlation between how the coaches that I work with, how they work with their clients. Mm-hmm. So all we've got here is, I think, is a slight difference in the naming yes. of the role. Mm-hmm. The coaches that I work with and myself, when I work one-on-one with clients, we meet weekly on Zoom. We <laughs> have a little bit of mentoring. We have some discussion. Where would mm-hmm. you like to go? We mm-hmm. have and and one of the big um, uh, cornerstones of coaching is that it's the client who leads. It's the mm-hmm. client who does the thing. The coach just facilitates. So mm-hmm. I know yeah. that you, you yeah. are all these things, and yet. <laughs> It is very similar to what I hear for coaching. So Mm -hmm. I just think that that's really fun. I just think that's cool. You know, you've got a particular modality that is your Mm -hmm. unique modality. And the result, just like coaching, people want more Mm -hmm. life, more joy in their life, more Mm -hmm. healing, a life of their choosing. Mm -hmm. And often more purpose. Yes, yeah. exactly. That purpose is kind of a big one that comes up because they come in going, I don't know why I'm here. I don't, you know, I'm tired of this. And and by the, once we clear stuff out, they can see, oh, here's my passion. And then when, that's where we start to build the story of how we can create, you know, something around that passion for them so that they can ha- have that in their life every day. Oh, that's so, so wonderful. Yeah, cool. it is. Well, we sure covered it from soup to nuts. All right. So <laughs> This was a great conversation and I loved meeting with Lauren. Now, Lauren, tell my audience, please, how can they find you? What's one great way that they can get connected with you? Well, the best way is my website and it is heart light joy, heart like your heart, light like turning on the lights and joy.com. So heartlightjoy.com. And I have a button there where you can um, you can get a free free chat with me so you can get to know me and we can talk about you know whatever you want to but um and there's just a lot of other things there and i'm adding things all the time so that's the best place to go and see what's happening that's great okay so one spot go and check out lauren's website i know that there's going to be all kinds of stuff there i met lauren Mm -hmm. just by chance on Mm -hmm. a networking call and i thought oh she's exactly the kind of woman I'd like to talk to. So I knew you guys would like hearing her too. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll be back again next week. Thanks again for listening today. Please hop on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Also, I would love to hear from you. Did something that I say resonate? What else would you like to learn about? Click the link in the player and leave a comment on the post. This is going to give me great ideas for future episodes so I can help you best. Join me again next week for more coaching, support, and teaching to help you become the confident coach you are meant to be.